be assigned a different LAN IP. So at the moment, um, it's 192.168.0.3. You mess it about one day and you unplug it, reconnect it, and it automatically get, gets assigned a new LAN IP, VG 192.168.0.4. So if that happens, then um, when you're trying to access NAS remotely, uh, the, old, the old firewall uh, menu of the router uh, is going to have the wrong LAN IP <coughs> for its port forwarding. Uh, so you won't be able to access it. Uh, to avoid all that, you create what's called a static IP, which means you can unplug it, uh, reconnect it, mess about you know, with the ports on your router and all that, and it will stay the same LAN IP. So you won't have to go into your firewall menu of the router to uh, to change the LAN IP there. That makes sense. Okay. So let's do that. You want system administration, network, and then it's the other menu next to the DDNS one. And you want to click on edit. And then instead of obtaining IP address settings automatically, use static IP address. And there we go, I've entered my static IP address. Right, it's the same LAN IP, but it's in the firewall wrong of the router. Okay, um, that's pretty much everything you'll need to know. Let's get going with the NAS drive. Now, me personally, I use Komodo Firewall, which is really good, uh, very highly rated. Uh, probably the best free firewall you can get out there. And they offer an option for secure Komodo DNS servers. So an extra security measure for your NAS drive is to enter these DNS servers uh, into the relevant section in Administrator. So I'll just go there now. Okay, so here we are in the DNS menu of networking. Just enter the Komodo secure DNS servers there, and you shouldn't have any trouble. Uh, it won't affect your other settings. So yeah, a bit of extra security there for you. And then to get even more security out of it. Uh, if you go to General Settings in System Administration, and here we are, you've got Enable Secure Connection. If you tick that box underneath it, for Secure Connection Only, then every time anybody connects to your domain name, um, type your domain name to connect to the NAS, um, it will come up HTTPS uh, instead of HTTP, which means uh, it's secure, you're using uh, secure pages. Uh, so, yeah, that's a little bonus for you. And then you click Apply. Yeah, you really want to be doing that. Uh, we want to risk it with a, uh, my network. So once you've enabled this for secure connection only, you may find that you're having trouble logging in um, or even bringing up the, the web page of the QNAP. Uh, what you'll need to do is go to QFinder again, let it find the, uh, the device, and then click on Connect. And then you'll see a screen that will say, uh, this, um, this seems untrusted. A bit, a bit of page saying something about being untrusted. Um, and that's because you've enabled this secure connection only. So it's basically saying, uh, do you trust this computer to connect to the NAS drive? Uh, so just go down to the bottom where it comes up on that screen and click on add exception uh, And then it'll come up with another menu. Just go down to the bottom again and uh, yeah, click on OK So you, you add that exception and then it'll come back up and you'll be able to log in as usual uh, You may find that it's slightly slower with this enabled, but it's worth it Reset in the NAS Like most routers You push in with a paper clip Just hold it And hold it down uh, it's a bit just close, isn't it? Right, I'll do it if it was. Right, so, uh, reset. Like I said, as soon as you've done this, log in as admin, admin, and uh, reset that admin password. Don't make the mistake of logging in as, uh, you know, some other user, and then forget to reset the, the admin password. Because anyone that uh, knows your domain name to access this, um, may be able to, uh, Back into it, which is what you don't want. I'll just type it in, I've been up it. Of course, you won't be allowing their one IP address um, through your, your router, the firewall on your router, so uh, yeah, that's less likely to happen. But you never know, somebody on the uh, on a computer that is allowed, um, but you don't want to access it, maybe I'll access it, but it's using the default username and password, I've been up it. Okay, so uh, yeah, we've reset it. Here we are, we've reset it. Uh, that means. That means. Admin. Oh no, I'll be in. There we go. So, remember, change your password. Okay. Um, now what I did was I bought one hard drive for this to start off with, because I wasn't that familiar with networking. Uh, I managed to network a couple of computers together once. I don't know how, because uh, that was a right mess. But this makes it much easier. Um, once you've figured out the basics, 
Uh, you don't have all the uh, nonsense you get with networking via Windows or uh... Okay, if you're like me, and you bought only one hard drive for you, and that's just to check it out first. But you actually get it all working because you followed my tutorial. Uh, and now you want to fit a second hard drive. You go to disk management, volume management. Now, uh, you can go for the speed and have a rate zero, zero per rate, or uh, to be more sensible, and go for the mirror disk volume. Mirror disk just means uh, create a duplicate uh, of everything that's on uh, your other disk. So if that disk fails, you haven't lost any of your data because it's on your own. And then you just fit another drive, and there's an option to, uh, oh, what was it? Uh, basically, if one fails, you can put another one in and pull your data from the other one onto that and continue to use your mirror. Uh, <coughs> so I haven't done this yet. I'm going to do it now. Uh, you'll want to get the second drive as soon as you realise you're going to get one. You think, oh, I could do another one for that. Get it straight away instead of continuing to use an NAS because you will need to format uh, both disks, which of course means deleting whatever's on the current drive so that you can get this array. Okay, so I'm going to do that now, the first time I've done this. So two, two turbo drives to be mirrored. Create. Oh yeah, it's in here. I want to mirror. That one, that one. That one. Create. And yeah, like I said, here's a message. All the data and network shares on the disk or disks you selected will be cleared. That's why you want to get your backup disk as soon as you realise you want one. Okay. Good. Uh, what's it doing? Yeah, it's mirroring it. Initialising. Okay, so once that's done, um, you'll have your RAID array. So before, I went through Web File Manager, just um, went past it, and uh, said there's an easier way of viewing your files instead of using this menu. I'll just go in here quickly, first of all, to show you, and then I'll show you the better way of setting up the NAS drive to view your files and uh, manage your files. Okay, so I'll just log in. Default. As default, you'll find that surveillance station is greyed out there. Uh, it's not um, operational. So you go to Applications in System Administrator, click on Surveillance Station, and then just enable Surveillance Station, and then it'll appear uh, up there. It won't be greyed out anymore, and you can use it. Before I mentioned the Web File Manager, uh, I just spoke about it briefly, saying there's an easier way of accessing your files and managing them, uh, so you don't have to use this menu, because uh, it's really slow and uh, uh, it's not a very good way, not a very user-friendly way of uh, managing your files. So I'll go through what you have to do, um, so that you can get it on your desktop, and uh, navigate through the files, through folders using um, Windows Explorer. Okay, so the first thing you'll need to do is right-click my computer, go to Map Network Drive. Okay, what have we got? Now, if you're using a host computer, i.e. the computer that you've got the QNAP installed through, um, of course it'll be plugged into your router and your router then plugged into uh, the host computer. Yeah, that's the host computer, the computer that's got everything uh, running on it. So, <coughs> if that's the case, then here you put, you can see the example there, so you put this, and then the LAN IP of the connected QNAP, the NAS drive, which in this case, I'm on a different computer today, so uh, the LAN IP is different to the one I was using beforehand. Right, that's the LAN IP of the QNAP, as it shows up in attached devices of your router. Okay. Then uh, you want a folder that you want to be access uh, accessible. So let's say you want the uh, multimedia folder. On the NAS drive, uh, you'll be able to see in the web file manager uh, all the f folders that are already uh, installed on the NAS drive. And so there's uh, a multimedia folder, a download folder, uh, a public folder, and so on. So we, we want the multimedia folder. And it's called Q Multimedia. Okay, once that's done, uh, you finish. I'll press enter. And then it will appear down here. There it is at the top. We're in my computer again. And it appears as a network drive. So I've got all these network drives. 
once it's there, oh, there's nothing in the multimedia folder. This one, uh, here's a different one there. My other QNAP drive uh, in the office. There we go, and we can uh, we can go through all this through uh, Windows Explorer. Here's a video. If you've got, um, oh, actually, we might be able to thumbnail that. I don't think it's going to give us a preview. But yeah, it's a much easier way of uh, accessing the drive. And then you can easily create a shortcut to these folders on your desktop. Oh, that can be very slow sometimes, though. Eh? Depends on your internet connection, I suppose. That's what you're limited to with these NAS drives the speed of your internet connection. Yes, yeah, so you'll be able to thumbnail Olympics, which you can't do in the web file manager menu with queuing up. Yeah, so I've done, let's just do another one, go over again. Right click here, and then web drive. Now before, because I was on host computer, I put in a LAN IP of the NAS drive. Uh, but let's say you're not on a host computer and you want to connect to these folders uh, remotely. You would then put in the domain name uh, that you've assigned to the QNAP uh, and then um, backslash the folder that you want to access on it. Okay. Uh, one thing I've noticed, when you try putting in the uh, domain name you've assigned for the QNAP from the host computer, uh, it won't send you to the QNAP um, drive. Um, even when you type it in your browser, it won't send you to that, um, the QNAP menu where you can go through all those different options. Uh, instead it will send you to your router login screen. Uh, yeah, it will ask you to log into your router. So, <coughs> yeah, a bit of a shame that you have to put in a LAN IP on the host computer. Um, I'm not sure why it does that, but... Um, so yeah, uh, it's a LAN IP on the host computer and a domain name if you're connecting remotely. And that's it, and now I've put them on my desktop. And then uh, get yourself a file synchronization program and you can then synchronize a backup between your office queuing up and your home queuing up for example. Uh, again you're limited to your internet speed so <coughs> if you're dealing with really large files you'll want to put them on a USB stick and just plug them into the queuing up. Oh yeah that's another thing you can do with these queuing ups. Uh, just plug in a USB stick into the top of them and then uh, grab the files straight onto it. Uh, <coughs> yeah QUSB that's the folder. You can uh, access whatever's on your memory stick by going to the queue, Q USB folder once you've plugged it into your queuing up. Uh, like I said, big files, you want to be doing it that way. You don't want to be trying to transfer them over the internet, which would take days. Um, <coughs> but yeah, there you go. Um, can't be helped really. But the um, host computer won't have any trouble copying and pasting files to the QNAP or from it. Um, it'll be the sort of speed that you're expecting. Um, you know, like you would, like would copy and paste files um, onto your desktop every day, you know, copying them up. It's that kind of speed not the limited internet connection speed. Okay, so there we go. Uh, good file synchronization program. Uh, super flexible file synchronizer. There are options to um, backup to other QNAPs uh, with the QNAP drive that you buy. And also cloud backups, that's a new thing that's um, come with the latest uh, firmware of the QNAP. You can back up to a cloud server. Uh, all sorts of other backup options that I'm not really familiar with. Um, and there may even be a faster way of backing up from QNAP to QNAP, so you don't, you're not that limited uh, to your internet connection speed, but I don't know about that. Um, you're still doing it through the internet, aren't you? So. Anyway, that's uh, mapping network drives.